there's this uh, bizarre interpretation that uh, some people have when it comes to the book of Hebrews. And I feel the need to debunk it. Uh, and, it and it is really strange. And, and what I'm talking about is that there's some people that they think that the book of Hebrews was written for uh, Jews in the future during the tribulation. And the people that teach this, they, they think it's the book of Hebrews is pretty much exclusively written to them, you know, to the Jews during the tribulation. <laughs> like pretty much exclusively. And another weird thing this group tends to believe and preach, they claim that during the tribulation, salvation is going to be by works, and that's heresy, okay? And, look, the, the book of Hebrews was an epistle, right? It was a letter uh, written to Hebrews, and it was delivered, okay, like 2,000 years ago to a group of Hebrews. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, in chapter 1, talking about Jesus Christ in verse 3, it says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, you know, if you think this letter is written for Jews in the future, thousands of years in the future from when this was written, you know, so you're telling me for thousands of years, people read these first three verses of the, of the book of Hebrews and got to this part where it talks about how, how Jesus Christ had by himself purged our sins. And you, you think that people just thought, well, that I guess that's just talking about just people in the future. That's a weird interpretation. I'm, not, I'm having none of it, okay? And also, like the book of Hebrews really defends eternal security and talks about the futility of the Levitical system and how it can't save anybody and how it works can't save anybody and how the law made nothing perfect, okay? And uh, and how God, you know, how, how Christ saves to the uttermost. And how the blood of bulls and goats could, could never take away sins. And uh, here in verse 10, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Uh, and I'm going to continue reading here. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never talk, take away sins. And that's in reference to the Levitical priesthood. Verse 12, but this man after... You know, that's a reference to Christ. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of, of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Um. You know, that's, you know, past tense. Offer one one sacrifice for sins forever, past tense. All that's in the past. So it's really weird to think that, 
you know, that people could be reading this right now and people could have read this like 2,000 years ago and, you know, you want to try to tell me that that doesn't apply to um, to people now or, or, that, or, or 2,000 years ago to the Hebrews that this was originally written to, okay? Um, it's bizarre. And look, the, the fact that, uh, you know, Jesus Christ was offered as one sacrifice for sins forever, um, yeah, that applies for Jews in the future, but it also applies uh, for Jews in the past. And, and it applies for everybody because in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how Jesus Christ teaches death for every man. Okay. And look, the, for example, the book of Romans, uh, it was written to a group of believers that were living in Rome at the time. And it was true for them, but we could also take some applications from it. And it wasn't just for like, oh, these future Romans someday. No, it was, <laughs> you know, the same thing with the book of Ephesians and Colossians and, uh, you know, uh, first and second Peter, you know, first and second Peter, he was writing a letter to people he knew at the time. Just like the book of Hebrews, it was written to people that the author knew at the time. Okay. I mean, he even, and because there's, you know, because there's doctrine in the book of Hebrews and the book of Romans and first and second Peter and in Philemon, you know, in Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians, uh, you know, we could take doctrine from it, okay? But to say that some epistles are just for people in the future, that's just bizarre. Okay. Um, even towards the ending of the book of Hebrews, uh, it says, and I bes in verse starting in verse 22, and I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in few words. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all that and all the saints, they of Italy salute you. Grace be with you all. Amen. And so, you know the author, who uh you know, we don't know for sure, but many people believe that the, uh, uh Paul wrote Hebrews. But you know, it doesn't explicitly say, so we don't know for sure. Um But he's saying, hey, you know, Timothy's free. You know, if, if, if he comes shortly, I will see you. So the author of Hebrews is saying, hey, I'm going to go see you. Um, so, yeah. Like, he's not talking to people thousands of years into the future. Right there, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he wrote this. To people in his time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and yes, you know, we could take doctrine from it now. And even Jews during the tribulation could take doctrine from it. And I hope they realize that salvation has never been of works and it's never going to be of works. And that they trust in Jesus Christ alone and the book of Hebrews is a great book that defends eternal security. Right? It's it's one of the best books at defending eternal security if you read it in context. And uh you know 
a big plot line in the book of Hebrews also is uh, how these saved Hebrews during the time the book was written how they were feeling pressured to uh, you know go back to having like the Jewish customs and the temple and, and the law and how um, and how no you know G Jesus Christ is your your Sabbath Jesus Christ is your sacrifice he is your high priest okay and he's able to save to the uttermost and you know e e even in in uh, Hebrews 5 talks about in verse 12 for when for the time you ought to be teachers uh, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. Um, and earlier he talks about how they're, they're becoming dull of hearing. This is a rebuke, right? And uh, just from that context alone, it, it, it seems like the author uh, like knew them personally. <laughs> um, so anyways... See ya.